lot of problem breathing at night. And uh, my sinuses seemed to block, block me up, and my, I didn't realize what I was saying. One day I was with a friend, and he, he was a lawyer friend of mine. He said, how are you doing, Ron? I said, well, I'll breathe better when I get on my feet. Oh my God, I heard myself say that. So, so you got on your feet. <laughs> yeah, I breathe good when I get up, but then when I'm not on my feet, I have trouble breathing. I was planting the seed all my life. I'd used that, I thought it was an innocent expression. Another thing he said, I found out with this guy, Craig, he, he, actually, he un 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 unconsciously changed my life. Um, he was a successful lawyer. And we still were first place for dinner all the time. And uh, one time he said, how are you doing? And I said, um, I said, I said I'll do better when I'm on my feet. Oh, I remember what I said. I thought it was so pious. I said, Lord provides all my needs. I used to say that. The Lord provides all my needs. Well, all I ever had was my needs. I never had a bunny. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. You know, and guess what happened? Guess what happened? I started saying, the Lord provides all my, uh, my needs in abundance more. The same man that I was in his house having dinner introduced me to a business selling air ionization multi-level. I became the top distributor in the United States for that company. I became the vice president. I made hundreds of thousands and quarter wow. million dollars a year. I was making a salary of 104,000 a year salary. I sold my organization, my multi-level group, for over almost $180,000 cash. Walked out of Chicago, went to California to be VP of the company. They gave me 104,000 a year salary. I had a uh, hundred and some thousand in my pocket, and I had uh, 3,000 a month coming in from the sale of the business in addition to my 104,000. I mean, I went from just merely making my needs to abundance beyond. Now, was that, you were selling air? Air. And then you had trouble breathing, and then you just started getting your needs met, and then it <laughs> And get this, beautiful, listen to this one. Oh man, you know what ionization is? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Zeus, it's Zeus. Oh. See that little device on that table there? It's an ionizer. It's pumping air ions in the room. And ions are produced by lightning. Isn't that an appropriate thing for me? I'm Sagittarius. The center of the lightning bolt. I'm selling lightning in a box. I made a fortune. I started doing info commercials. From one end of the United States to the other, I became so successful. There were years we made a quarter million dollars cash. And what did you say that was different? Ionization improves your mood, your energy, your health, your breathing. But when instead of saying I only get my needs, or some, what did you say? I said and an abundance more. Oh, you did? You yeah. asked for this or something better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, you know there's, somebody said to me many times, I said, my, you must have studied neuro-linguistics. And I said, no, I never have. I said, well, that's what they teach. You know, and I said, that's great then. Somebody else has got the truth and they're presenting it in a way that's palpable to other people, you know? Because I'm tend to be a little scriptural and people sometimes are turned off by that, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. They come to me because they're supposed to, and they're not turned out, it's okay. And NLP can be very demystified and it's kind of straightforward if you ever do study it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah I think so. But there, yeah. Somebody's taken and made it into a wonderful thing, I think, because they made it presentable to the masses. The original person, Virginia Woolf, she was a, a counselor, so it was for family communication. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And then there's some play about who's afraid of Virginia Woolf, so I mean, it gets to be, you know, wow. but people have different ways of, we, for, the rapport is the original, is the yeah. main goal, I guess, if you boil it down. Yeah. But um, also, like what you're saying, I'm going to stop talking about the, um, the subconscious doesn't um, digest or whatever uh, negative, so when you say, um, I don't love you. You're saying I love you. As far as it knows, as far as the dumb, it's not I never, dumb. I never heard that one. Well, there, there's a, there's it doesn't energy process negatives being expressed too with it. That's good. But when you leave your body, you don't really have a lot of emotions. You have a lot of thoughts, and where you think it manifests right away. Come back to the third dimension. And there's there's a there's more of a, a time gap between what you think and what you get. You know what I mean? How come some people um, remember leaving okay. their body and others don't? I think that when you leave your body, well, you can have lucid dreams, but I think that you have your body has to be resonating at the same frequency as your higher self for you to be pulled into that. And I don't think that a lot of people really control it. You know what I mean? Too much. It's brain. Yeah. I don't know if it has amazing, to amazing knowledge here. You know what I mean? And we all could spend time just sharing them. And that's what I like to see happen in our group. You know where. It's not just me up here talking, but it's everybody kind of contributing and sharing. And um, 
you know, a little bit of um, camaraderie there that I see happen in groups that can be really very loving. Um, yeah, I think, you know, you know, we, 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 we are all magicians, but we don't know it. You know, we all have magical power, but we don't see it and we don't use it. And uh, it all deals with that. When we talk about metaphysics, the root cause of all things, understanding where it comes from. Too bad we don't teach those things in school. <laughs> you know, and give kids a sense of who they really are. Oh, just wait. <laughs> Probably some individual teachers do. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm trying to get you somewhere. Believe it or not, I'm going somewhere. I think I am on this. Some of my slide pro presentations are, this one was very long. Uh, I couldn't go through it the other day when I did it for you guys. <laughs> I'm petered out. Yeah. I just thought I have my ass in the swing. <laughs> Burns me up, yeah. I'm working, yeah. Yeah, that's a great one, huh? I mean, these are all, there's just, you could go to the ends of time of, with all these things we say. Uh, it would be cool to correct them, like on one side, put them there, and then get to the opposite side of what you really want instead of what, yeah, just to say what the problem. Yeah. Like, you changed your life, I guess, with a different yeah. scene or thought. Yeah, trouble comes in three. People make these things, I'm not going to live to be 30. You know, I have people say a lot of stuff that's crazy, you know. And I, and I keep finding them, there's a lot more since I did the book, you know. Um, these are negative mm -hmm. affirmations. People keep saying them. Like, I'm growing old, I'm getting old. I try to avoid that, you know. I'm 80, yeah. almost 80 years old, but I've never tried to affirm that. I always keep the, the positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. And my wife even catches me saying, you know, I'm getting a little slow and You know, I said, no, 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 don't go there. She won't let me. I, I say that, oh, I'm getting older now. And then ever since, I think now, ever since, I no, really, ever since I say, I've been saying that, I've been getting gray hair. Don't, yeah. I, I'm serious. Don't, I think, don't I affirm think it. Don't affirm I think that's why I'm getting <laughs> well. yeah. there, There's a woman in uh, Astrobule, Ohio, who was a psychic, an amazing reader. She was an amazing woman. Her name was, uh, um, um, let's see. Mary something. Huh? Mary something. Yeah. Can you believe I did that? It'll come to you. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I used to go something. give sermons in church, she had a church and she had a big place so people could come and stay there at a place. And uh, um, Mary Bowers, Helen, Helena Bowers, Helena Bowers. Oh, Helena Bowers. Because of that story, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 I got this up here, wouldn't you know it? So, <laughs> Helena Bowers, and she was amazing. She, there was a book about her, Helena's Healing Hands. Amazing woman, she's done so many amazing things. Uh, and so, I went with my ex-wife there before we were married, we weren't married yet. And of course, I introduced Linda, my ex-wife, as my wife when I went there. And whenever you come to her place after we drove from Chicago to Ashtabula, Ohio, it's a long way. And on that long drive, my back was out, and I was in such pain. And um, so when I came in, she does a healing thing on me, and she says to me, and she was engaged to a man named um, Peter Meyer when she was a young lady. She's in her 80s now. Okay. And she was engaged to a man, a doctor, and he got killed in a car wreck. And he came back to her after he died, and he said, look, at, I, if you, because she said, I'll never marry again. She never was, she only loved one man, and that was him. And uh, he came back to her and he said, if you want to heal, I can, as a physician, he was a physician, by the way, he said, I can do more work from this side than I could from that side. If you want to work with me, I'll be with you always to help you heal. Well. That night I go in and I sit down and I, she, she starts going over my body and she says, you've got back problem. I said, yeah, well, I almost limped in there, but I said, yeah, I do. She says, well, Dr. Peter Meyer is gonna come and work on you tonight while you're asleep and you're gonna leave your body and he's gonna move into your body. I don't want you to be frightened by that and it's gonna happen. I didn't believe her. You know, I mean, I think, I'm, I'm, I'm into all this stuff, but I'm very hard to prove something to me. I mean, it's good to be. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, I'm not incredibly incredulous, you know what I mean? But anyway, so I, I, I went to bed that night, and I swear to God, I felt myself leave my body. Mm -hmm. I felt somebody else move into my body. Mm -hmm. I wake up the next morning, and I'm healed. Wow. Yeah. I'm healed. No pain. I get up. I go downstairs. Oh, no. Helena yells up to us. Get down, breakfast is ready. Well, I'm young and I'm feral. And I'm gonna get one more time in bed. I'm not gonna go down right now because I'm enjoying myself. 
<laughs> and I think I'm getting away with it. I go downstairs, I sit at the table. She starts scolding me. Don't you ever, ever do that again. I tell you to come down here, that doesn't mean you go to bed with your wife. Oh, thinking, what, you got cameras in that room? <laughs> <laughs> and furthermore, you told me you were married to her. You're lying to me. You were not married. That's how she was. She's scary. <laughs> <laughs> and she was right. She was right. But I swear, that's how, that's how she was. You know, she could just see amazing. The book, the book, I'm sure her book's still available. Helena's Healing Powers. She's got a reputation. People go with cancer, everything. They come back out of it healed, you know. But uh, what did I tell you? But I used to do, I go there every year and give lectures and sermons. And when I do readings, I do chair readings for people. And my ex-wife, uh, Linda, I brought her up into doing tarot cards. She's a hell of a tarot reader. Very good at it. Um, I always believe it's a very womanly thing to tarot reading. I think it's a, a woman's art more than a man's. Forgive me for the sexist stuff, but that's probably not going over well. But anyway, so <laughs> anyway. Well, I... I mean, with all the pictures and the art and everything, that's kind of like, you know, women are very creative. I think so, it's yeah. It's a yeah. yeah, I think it, it just fills her. She was amazing. I mean, they would, she would sit down and do readings, and I would do, I remember the first time her father, her father was a very proper Jewish family, Nagelbergs, and I got their daughter, and she's with me, and we're at a, a carny, carnival, with a booth, and I'm doing astrology reading. Oh, yeah. She's got a, tur a thing wrapped around her head. She's doing tarot readings. Her parents came. Very proper, very good Jewish, very wealthy people. They walk in and see us in that booth. You can believe. They had us before the rabbi trying to talk us out of getting married. I mean, you know. I thought they were going to be Oh, my God. Who's, who's this guy? What's he doing to our daughter? Corrupting her. Anyway, so. <laughs> oh, you know, it's funny, I was trying to go somewhere, but you know me. Oh, that's a good one, huh? Everything I eat comes to fat. You know, you can make all the excuses you want, you know. Pennywise can't afford it. I'm broke. There's the Lord provides all my needs. That used to be my favorite one. Anyway. Okay, you know, you believe what you believe. You say what you believe. You, you, you know. I always thought that... Um, <laughs> this is a terrible little prayer for children. And I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord and my soul to keep. If I should die before I would, I pray the Lord and my soul to take. What a thing to tell a child. But, but anyway. It's just staying, like you said, to stay with the, um, with the light part. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. How many of you have ever heard that prayer before? Oh, I'm I sure, right? Oh, yeah. And then yeah. God bless Mommy and Daddy and all my friends and relatives, especially Nancy and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you got it down. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would like to apply um, what I learned today. So that's kind of like child programming almost. Yeah, so. it is. You know, and I talk about I how, we, as a positive, how many things we say to our children that uh, mm -hmm. I hear people saying, and because a child is pure receptivity. Exactly. And a child does not discriminate. And you, you say in front of a child, uh, he's just like his father. His father, of course, is a son of a bitch, you know, excuse me. He's a, he's a you know, good, he's an alcoholic, whatever. He's just like his father. Or uh, terrible twos. I hear people say that about their kids. I said, why would you put that in their kid's mind? That this, they should have a terrible twos. Or uh, um, um, uh, she just won't eat. She don't. She won't eat anything healthy. In front of the kid, they're saying that, and they wonder why the child does that. Because the child, is, you are, you're their conscious God, will, God. mind. You're putting all that in their. Yeah. So what would you say to say? What, do, what would you say to say? Like, don't spill the milk. Then they spill the milk because their mind is there. So you, how would you say it? Lift the cup, balance your picture. Cup. I mean, I don't know. Well, I'm, just, I'm a mother. I would say move your cup behind your plate, not in front of it. No, I'm sorry. You know, my parents always tell me you're so clumsy. You're so clumsy, and I'm so clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a little better now. I'm much better. But yeah, growing up. And you know, my mother said, my stepmother said to me all my life, mm -hmm. someday you're going to end up in prison. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I remember those words now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it did as a child. You know, yeah. You know, someday you're going to end up in prison, Watson. You know, oh, really? Oh, no, but you know. What you know, could she have said otherwise? Uh, I don't know. But then yeah. you learn how to live in a it'll destroy a child's self concept, and then that's when they're starting to make decisions based on what their subconscious is yes, thinking, exactly. even though it doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. With their current yes. reality. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people. Trying to make your way out of that. You know, I, I often tell a story about a woman I knew named Mary who had a, a farm raised. Did I share the story? 17 kids that were incorrigibles. The state gave up on them. They had them in all these homes and they couldn't raise them. People gave up and they would send them back to the state and say, I can't handle these kids. Mm -hmm. Mary had a farm. 
she had a farm in Michigan. And I went with her, I was at her place, and uh, I, I was amazed. She had 17 of these kids nobody could handle. And she, she brought those kids into perfect behavior. She gave them purpose. Guess what I said? I said to her, Mary, what's the secret? Listen to what she told me. I'll never forget this. She said, well, we're very strict here. We have 17 kids. And if they misbehave, we have to punish them. So at dinner time, we tell them they can't eat dinner with us. They have to go downstairs to the basement. And they can't come up to the door. They're supposed to go down the bottom of the stairs. So what we know about children is they're very curious and they want to hear everything that's going on at the supper table. So what, when we tell them to do that, we know what they're doing. They're coming back to the door and got the ear of the door so they can hear the conversation at the table. So my husband and I have developed something called table talk. Oh. And what we do is we talk about all the amazing development we've seen in that child. That's so nice. We see how they've improved. We see how much potential there is in them. We talk about all the things that we know that we want to see in that child. And guess what? Yeah. They start living up to it. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Makes sense. Power of the word. That's amazing. Yeah. You guys are beautiful. I keep you here all day. Don't let me do it. I love you all. Thank you for being here. Let me give you a hug. Come on, you're not getting out of here with a little bit. Step over, Zeus. I just understand one thing. So the three layers, mental, emotional, physical aspects we just had here. Thank you. It's so nice meeting you. I'll see you again. Manifest. Well, you